What's up ladies and gentlemen, this is Tony Mo from Pixabyte and today we are taking a look at The Howler, what I guess you would call a side-scrolling exploration game, adventure game, exploration game, developed by two developers from Lithuania. The man who's behind all the artwork is Rene Pachulione. He hand-drew this entire game. This whole game is hand-drawn, it's old school, there's no visuals, no engine, it's all handcrafted, and all the coding and stuff I imagine, and everything else was finished up by a man by the name of Antonas Marceliones. They created this game in one year. I guess it's more of an art project. I think it's rather fantastic, but it's going to be re it just released. It's available on PC and Mac on Deserve for 4.99. It's also available on iOS for 99 cents. Now, I usually don't start people off, you know, I usually don't start games at the start menu here, but I think this is a regular exceptionally well done start screen here. I like it quite a bit. We actually have Vilnius in the background here. We can see the the kind of fog over the top of the city. The the Howler logo is actually, you know, it has the steampunk gears moving on it. It's just, it's very well designed. We have birds, you can see the hot air balloons flying through the sky. They've taken time on it. Start screens, admittedly, have gotten rather boring over the years. And I like this one quite a bit, so I really wanted to show you guys that one. But what we're going to do now, we're going to hop into, you can see we're in Vilnius, 1905, the capital of Lithuania, actually. This game is actually roughly based on a steampunk novel called The Hour of the Wolf by Andreas Tapanas. So if you guys want to do some research on that, it's not available in English yet, but I guess it's going to be translated and be coming to America later this year, so we'll have a chance to read this. I'm rather intrigued to read this to read this novel, actually, now that I've played this game and saw the art style, and a little bit of the story as well. You can see right here, this is how the story is kind of revealed by these cases. Case number two, a light signal apparatus is to be delivered from the cathedral square to the navigators. Mission, pick the signaling device, land on the roof of the cathedral. Man, I'm all happy. Steampunk just makes me happy. I love steampunk. Now you can see to the bottom right here, we have voice mode. This is something very special that I'm simply going to let you guys be surprised by. Now what I'm going to do at the start of this game here, I want to talk about the art style. I might ramble a bit, I promise. I might talk a little bit loud as well, but I mean, look at it. It's fantastic, and we blew up. <laughs> let's try that again. Replay. All right, so let's talk about the art style now. Now that we're ready to go, let's talk about how awesome Steampunk is. Steampunk just makes everything better, in my opinion. I mean, look at it. It's fantastic. We have the nice, dark, rustic color in the background symbolizing the entire city. You know, we're going the wrong way. Okay, we've gone into the wind again. As you can see, we're flying up through the air. Now, the faster I talk, not really the faster, but the louder and the more clearer I talk about how fabulous this game looks and the fact that it's hand-drawn is rather fantastic, but it also powers the ascent of my hot air balloon. It's like the hot air coming out of my mouth. I'm just speaking so much rubbish. You don't even really understand what I'm saying, and we crashed. <laughs> that is... That is the howler, though. That is one of the main mechanics of this game. You saw on the intro screen there, it said point and scream your way through the levels. So, while... On the computer, we can click. I can hold down the mouse button here, and we can guide our hot air balloon into the air. I can also shout or yell or try and talk very loudly to power our balloon into the air. There's no left and right. Everything is powered by wind. If you look to the left side of the screen, you'll see the vane meters that we essentially have. Now, they tell us the direction of the wind and the number of actual, I guess, vanes on the back of the meter would basically show us how powerful that is. And if you look to the top of the screen, no, we lost our balloon. <laughs> You'll see the red kind of meter that is telling, you know, how much my voice is being tracked and picked up. And in the top left, we have our score, which is based upon how quick we, we make it to the level and packages and things that we have to deliver. So let's see if I can make it up through here. It's kind of a weird combination because now I have the voice thing still enabled. One problem I admittedly have been having with this game, well, it won't be that annoying because it's a very quick to load game. Hold on, I have to be silent for a second. Is there are some issues with it crashing for me uh, pretty often. While this isn't really a problem, the game boots up very quickly and it saves. Uh, the problem I was having is, you know, basically the fact that I'm trying to record and it keeps crashing on me. So that was kind of, kind of frustrating. Hopefully that's something they get fixed. Now I actually played the iOS version. Okay. I apologize if I stop talking randomly, but just need to get our balloon. Over a little bit more. Come on. There we go. Yes, I'm just going to talk very calmly, calmly about this game. Uh, I played the iOS version when I found out it was on iOS as well. I downloaded it for 99 cents and uh, decided to check it out. And it's it plays really well. I actually think it it kind of fits better on a mobile thing while we are previewing the PC version here. I cannot land, man. Um, <laughs> it's just it kind of a game that you just pick up and play really briefly, I feel like. And it works very well with mobile devices for that. Oh, this is rubbish. All right, there we go. Now, let's say that's one thing. I don't know if I can actually, uh, no, let's go quickly. I don't believe I can, uh, yeah, there's no way for me to turn off the voice commands in-game, which I think is something I wish they would just kind of patch in quickly. I mean, I guess it's really not a big deal. It's only a problem for me because I'm trying to record right now. You're probably just going to pick one or the other. 
But that's it does make the game a little bit more of a unique experience if you use your voice. Like, this is awesome. I'm commentating and I'm playing a game hands-free. Victory! <laughs> and you can see we got our score there. The case was resolved. All was well. I mean, that is the core of this game. You're really just flying through these levels, delivering packages. While the story will tell you more, sometimes you'll be delivering newspapers. The package is always the same size. Later on, you will actually see bombs. And there will be a plethora of other things. You can see we have another story here. Case number three. The navigators work in the Jetamanus castles on the hill. They are keen to get the apparatus as soon as possible. So we are dropping another package, but this time it is an apparatus. We're going to turn off our voice mode there. Clears his throat a bit. <clears throat> On to the next level. Now, as I said earlier, this game is hand-drawn, and that's what makes it so gorgeous, in my opinion. It's more like you're playing art. I mean, four ninety nine, ninety nine cents on iOS. People pay a lot more than that for art, and I love steampunk. I love steampunk. It's a weird obsession of mine. I think everything is made better with steampunk. And this game, the art style is just gorgeous. I love it. It's so... I don't know if the book has any, like images that it can put into my head through words, I will definitely read it when it comes here in uh, English translation, because I'm just, I'm loving this, but I'll show you a little bit more of the controls, we're going to go back to the mouse here if we just click on the screen, and then we actually need to drop our package right inside that vent, so we're going to hit the space bar, and away it goes. Now, if you were using your voice controls, you would just shout really sharply, and it would drop the package, so, I mean, that's pretty cool, you know, but this is a lot of the game, we have to use the wind, deliver packages, we got to make sure we use the wind to kind of get over objects, you can see there the direction of the wind changed, so I had to have enough speed to get over that spire, and then land on this side. It's a, it's a rather simple game, there's there's a decent amount of missions, you know, there's not a ton, if we go to the missions menu here, we have about, I think, 13, 14, 16 actually, 16 missions will be the max amount, and you know, you get to reveal little pieces of the story, but it's really, it's more of like a graphic, ex graphic novel experience almost to play this game, I like it quite a bit, it's really enjoyable. If you guys, you know, uh, love steampunk and love art style, I definitely recommend checking this game out. It's, uh, you know, it's fun to just pick up and play. That's why, if you can pick it up, I would actually say, you know, despite doing the preview on PC, I would say pick it up on iOS or iPad. It's something you can play while you're at work on lunch, you know, waiting in line at the post office. It's a fun game for those little moments like that, and it's great fun to have some friends to try and see who can shout the loudest and crash the other person's balloon into the top of the ceiling. But that's been a look at at the howler guys if you're interested in this game as always we will have a link in the below in the description below go check these guys out these two developers made this fantastic little game out of lithuania out of nowhere in my opinion and as always for more awesome games like this be sure to subscribe to us here on pixabay till next time it's been tony mo and i'll see you guys in the skies of vilnius